Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Stoneblock 2. I noticed that probably a lot of you didn't get notifications for the last episode, so just make sure to hit that bell and hopefully YouTube will do its thing and give you notifications for everything. And if you really enjoyed the episodes, toss a like at me. It really helps out. You don't know how much it means. And also, you can subscribe if you're new to see regular videos. I upload daily, five times a week. Uh, and let's begin today's episode. Firstly, I want to address a comment that was posted by Matthew, and he suggested to just put a bonsai pot, or bonsai pot uh, on top of the precision dropper, and that will automatically produce mana for us by constantly dropping random things on here. We can, uh, we're probably going to run into an issue where items are going to be on the floor, and they're going to despawn every five minutes, which shouldn't be a problem because there's only going to be one item on the floor, it's not going to cause lag or anything. Uh, we could put an advanced item collector once the endo flames uh, would stop working, but that would require the mana pool control, and I'm just going to leave it be for the moment. It's going to fill this up. We can even just do this once it's done. We can just take this one out and put this in, uh, and we're going to be fine for putting mana in. This guy is almost full, but... Uh, we can just leave it be for for a while and let this guy fill up. So what I want to do today is I want to start environmental tech because we are going to need a probably better ore production uh, than the sieves. Even though the sieves are producing pretty much anything, I don't really want to set up the whole soul sand machine for quartz. And we can get quartz from environmental tech. And that's going to take quite a while for us to get the required crystals for... Um, the things that we're going to need. So it's better to set it up early and just leave it be running. Uh, and hopefully we can increase the void or miners to uh, a better tier uh, very, very soon once we get enough crystals. And since we got two from the loot crates, we can just use the two for the moment. So at environmental tech and V row, there we go. Uh, we're going to need some structure frame tier ones, which is some lithorite, which is green dye and lime dye and flint and diamonds. So cactus, we have some of it. Uh, let's get, uh, that's like, for, uh, that's gonna be four stacks, five stacks, six, seven, eight. Let's get eight stacks of cactus green. Uh, and we can turn a little bit of that into, um, into lime. So we're gonna have kind of an equal part of cactus green and lime. Uh, so let's get some bone meal. Meal over here. And we can do four stacks of lime, and we're going to have probably some amount of cactus green. Yeah, we have a stack right now. I'm going to wait for a little bit of it to smelt. We can just use this guy to speed it up, or we can use our time in a bottle and just let it do its thing like that. And that's going to possibly like that do uh, a good job. So I'm going to make some lithorite. I'm going to craft the things that I need. I need structure frame tier ones, which require interconnects, which require the modifier components, which is black concrete powder. I'm glad I made some black dye, because we're going to need that for a, while, for a little bit. Uh, and then we need also some of the regular uh, structure panels, which are just connectors, which is just redstone. So I'm going to do a little bit of manual crafting uh, just to set this up. And then we can probably look at uh, auto crafting from Light Logistics. I think that would be lovely to have. So we can auto craft more cabling, more P2P tunnels, and generally get a better AE2 connection around the base. I have set one up and it comes up this big. The other one is over here. And as long as you have anything uh, and everything that you need to uh, build it, you can just use the assembler, which the recipe is just two obsidian and a lithorite crystal. You can just sit here uh, on top of it, for example, and just right click and it will build it for you very easily and simply. And it's gonna say assembled true on the left. And the owner is going to be you, so now we just need to toss some power on top, on both of these, like that. We're going to use canola power, because that's the self-sufficient system that we have. And then we're going to just toss a storage crate in the middle here. And I'm going to use some item ducts. I don't know if they automatically output to the ducts. If not, we can just use servos. Uh, but we'll see. Because you can extract, I think, directly from... Uh, the thing if not we might have to put some chests next to these but we'll see if this will work and if we get ores we uh, we should be fine and this is running it's we're gonna see 
no output okay because it's not doing anything so let's get some chests i think should be fine uh, maybe we can do even some some of the smaller crates that we have from immersive and we're gonna put those on the side and then we're gonna see if if they do their thing so crate here and a crate here oh no they don't have uh they don't have bedrock access just yet right uh, I'll wait on that because it might work the way I tried it right now. Uh, so let me just do the digging that I need. I need to go exactly underneath it in the center. So we have to find the laser core right here. This was a tiny bit too much. Uh, and I just need to dig directly down and we can do that with our destruction gadget. We're just going to turn the depth up to uh, all and then we're going to turn everything back to zero. So we should get just a straight down dig option and I forget I don't have uh, feather falling let's turn on hover mode uh, I don't know if there's bedrock down below or if uh, where we just die because uh, last time I checked there was just void in the first one in stone block one is what I'm trying to say oh is there void um, we'll see I think that's bedrock bedrock yeah okay so I need to do the exact same thing on the other one hopefully the shining light isn't too bright for you but I think I have uh, something from Optifine turning the beacon beam a little bit less bright and uh, less laggy as well so once we get up top we're gonna make the second hole and we should see if the system that I have up top works as you can see from that ore traveling down to the crate this does work we don't need any servos that they will automatically output and we should eventually get a bunch of ores a bunch of crystals and the one thing that we're looking for is a rhodium uh, because this is the second tier upgrade crystal to make the void or minor controller tier 2 and also the structure panels uh, tier 2 and we need first of all erodium tiles uh, which is i believe nine erodium each so we need quite a bit of this because we can use it to turn a normal la laser lens into a crystal laser lens which will greatly increase our chance of getting crystals it will go from 1.31 to 5.2 to get a rhodium so i think that is the first uh, a rhodium i want to spend it on uh, so we can just get a rhodium faster and if we want to we can set up multiple of these as well more than just two that we have here or i can just leave it be and wait and we'll see how uh, how far we get uh, if we get uh, this crate entirely full of different types of ores before we get enough erodium, we can set up a temporary drawer system for all of this. Uh, and eventually we're going to set up ore processing for all of these different types of ores. Because I want to process platinum, for example, uh, to get 100% of the time uh, platinum ingots. We can do that with an induction smelter and some cinnabar. We can triple it and also get iridium as well. Uh, even though I don't think we're going to need Iridium for many things because uh, the, it doesn't have very much use. I think right now we can make Iridium coins, which we could use to make power. Um, but all in all, we can just uh, triple our Platinum. We could also probably process this with Mechanism, I think. Yeah, we can enrich it to get directly Pulverized Platinum. Uh, or we could probably do the whole tripling thing. Uh, which I forget uh, how you do and if you can't even do it with this uh, It doesn't really show me right now. We could even try doing the whole ore washing factory from industrial foregoing which requires liquid meat So we would need a farm for that um, That could be a thing because I haven't done it before and you get sand and platinum and Okay um, for, for the moment, we're just gonna leave it be uh, get it all the crystals gather all the things that we can gather and uh, that should be fine One thing that I want to do is just upgrade our cell to the resonant tier So we can output a total of 25,000 RF per tick and we can store 50 million Which is gonna be really nice. We can also I think enchant this with holding so it's gonna hold even more I'm pretty sure uh, Holding enchantment works for the, for everything. I think yeah energy cells it goes from Storing 2 million to 6 million with holding 4. And uh, the resonant tier ones is, are going to go up higher anyway. And that's for every single thing from Thermal Expansion, which is really cool. You can even make strong boxes store more items. Oh, I didn't know that. Or caches. Caches? Caches. Um, right. That's pretty cool. Okay. 
Before we dive into AE2 auto crafting, I want to set up some more GP and I, we can use some water mills uh, for this because uh, they're easy to make and are just going to be a great thing to do for uh, early GP. And we don't need much, I just need enough to get uh, two mechanical users running uh, so that we can uh, upgrade this pickaxe and level it up to get, I think we just need one more modifier, no, two more modifiers to make it fully unbreakable. And we can do that with some speed upgrades uh, that we have here. And then we can probably use some netherrack. Uh, 31 might be enough. Probably, we'll see. Uh, and we can also get an advanced, advanced, I can just do item collector. Uh, we can make another one of those. Item collector. Just need a redstone torch and two glowstone. And we're gonna need a filter as well. So we need this guy. And then we can probably put this uh, next to our Botania stuff because we have the uh, the dislocation normalization field projector here. So what we'll do is I'll take a destruction gadget and we're gonna turn it to three, we're gonna do two, three, two, and two. So we get, actually let's do one more on the side. There we go. So we can just remove giant chunks like that. Awesome. Uh, and we can set this up uh, right here probably this will do so we'll gonna do like this we're gonna put you here with a filter for netherrack and we're gonna put you in here uh, we can just lower the radius uh, to like this much and we're gonna see if it's gonna pick it up uh, and we need you to be on place block right click we're gonna put some speed upgrades in there upper left slot only doesn't matter uh, if it's stand up slot or upper left slot we can put this here and say use item on block, activate block with item, use item, entity. Oh, we need to do left click. There we go. That's gonna start doing its thing. And if we do this, uh, we need to increase the radius on this a little bit. I don't think this should burn netherrack and it's instantly being picked up anyway. So this is uh, leveling up pretty nicely and if we had more speed upgrades we could uh, get more than we have 64 GP so we don't necessarily need to do any more GP increases because we don't have any more speed upgrades but I can just leave this be until it breaks and then it's gonna have a bunch of levels on it and uh, I can just uh, upgrade it pretty quickly uh, do we have a pickaxe for the moment um, hmm yeah, we don't really. What if we make that party pickaxe right now? Yep, okay. That's our pickaxe for the moment. It will get instantly repaired by our repair tool uh, or repair tablet. Uh, talisman, that's the word. So yeah, uh, I'll leave this be and I'll just wait until it levels up two levels and then we can make it unbreakable and have a super duper pickaxe. Since this pickaxe has a stone head, it is breaking quite quickly in here. So for the moment, while it's leveling up, I'm just gonna exchange it for a slime pickaxe head because that's gonna increase the durability by a thousand, if not a little bit more. Uh, so we can toss this in here and that's gonna last quite a bit longer. Uh, we can also use our uh, time in a bottle to speed this up and also speed that up. And that works much, much faster. And this should last for around, let's say, 3,000 block breaks. So it should get probably halfway there. We're also getting, apparently, oh yeah, we're getting loot boxes because the slimes are being killed. Uh, rip. Okay. Um, we can turn this to upper left slot only and we could select so we pick up everything, but I think it's fine if everything just drops on the floor and I'll clean it up in a bit. Uh, but we can just stay here and keep on speeding this up. I have plenty of hours here to use up to, to do this. So what I think I'll do is just spend a little bit of time here and uh, try to get it at least one more level and then I'm just gonna leave it be until it breaks and uh, that should be good. The pickaxe just leveled up and we can just turn this off for the moment. Uh, I don't think I need to repair it. I can just add another reinforcement and that should be reinforced four. So we're at 80% chance to not use durability. And actually, I'm just gonna repair it. I think it's fine. We have enough slime to make more slime crystals if we need to. And I'm gonna turn this on 
And now this needs 32,000 experiences. So I think it's best if we just leave it be. And what I probably should have done is just made a new pickaxe and uh, firstly made it unbreakable. And then I could just leave it in here, do its thing and uh, forget about it for a couple episodes and have a fully leveled pickaxe. But for the now, we're just gonna keep an eye on it. If we waste some netherrack, that's fine. Uh, we can easily make some more. And we should hopefully by the end of this episode get it to Grandmaster. I'm not gonna spend all the time here just speeding it up because I could be here for like an hour uh, and just do that over and over again until we get it to Grandmaster. Uh, but I think if we just leave it, hopefully by the end of the episode we should have a fully leveled pickaxe that we can make unbreakable. And we can then just leave in there to get more modifiers if we need to add anything else to it. Uh, we're also going to upgrade it to a uh, cobalt pickaxe head, so it's going to be even faster for mining, and that will be pretty cool. Uh, let us quickly check on our void ore miners and see how they're doing. We got a whole two erodium. Magical. Only a bajillion to go <laughs> to get to the next tier. This is incredibly slow. Uh, I'm glad I set it up now, and we can just uh, forget about it for three or four episodes or something and uh, hopefully we'll get a bunch of erodium by the time we need to upgrade the uh, lens or the sorry the laser lens or the entire void or miner before we start doing anything with molecular assemblers which i have crafted off camera and i also have a bunch of me interfaces i set up a bunch of p2p tunnels we need our terminals so uh, we can get a fluid terminal and we can put that somewhere uh, we will rearrange these as we go we need an interface terminal which we can put right here and then we're going to grab a pattern terminal as well to put right here uh, and the next thing that we would need is probably also a gas terminal if we do anything with uh, with gases and do we need anything else from the terminals we have the crafting we have the fluid interface pattern we can just use a regular terminal I think I have one left. Just for viewing, uh, we can set this to be like a, a tall center terminal. And if we need to do anything to search in here, we can uh, probably find it easier. Uh, we can set this to auto search keep, uh, number of items, that's fine, that's fine. And you need to be number of items, auto search keep as well. So there, we can see everything in here. We firstly need <clears throat> to make some patterns and the blank patterns are going to be like this. <clears throat> we can just put one here and encode it for a pattern uh, like so. And we're going to put it in our interface terminal as soon as we set up our molecular assemblers and ME interfaces. And I think I want to put this over here on this wall. So I'll be removing all of these machines and we can run just a setup of interfaces and molecular assemblers here around this wall and that should look pretty cool. I think putting the interfaces and assemblers in the wall will be a little bit weird. So what I decided to do is uh, do little towers like this. They're gonna only be four tall and we can set up a couple of them. We can just have scaffolding go in around like this uh, and we can just set up with some of the sheet metal like this. And I'm decided to use gold and I will probably use gold for like applied energistics machines and we can use, even though we're using like lead here, we can probably switch this to gold, but I think lead looks fine. Uh, we might even switch this to some other sheet metal, but I think gold looks fine for the moment. Everything is pretty gray here, so the color variation is kind of nice. Um, right, so here we're gonna go like this and like this and this needs to be for stone and stone doesn't work from my dev null, it does from my dank null, but dank null isn't a thing anymore. So down here we're gonna set up some scaffolding, which I don't have on me anymore. But um, I'm gonna make a couple of these towers, probably enough to fill up a P2P tunnel uh, full of channels. I think that's gonna be, f uh, I think only the interface takes channels, so that's gonna be four, and two are gonna be eight, so I need I can do probably, you know what, we can do a, uh, we can do nine of these in a circle and, or maybe we can do some crafting storages uh, in betwixt each one. I will also make uh, some of that uh, off camera. Uh, we can make ourselves some, uh, add applied logistics, some of these crafting co-processing unit and some crafting storage. Uh, actually, 
We're probably just gonna craft this with auto crafting as soon as we get it set up. So I might just make a few uh, like 4K or 1K storages or something just so we can get uh, enough to start our crafting process. I did a bunch of work on this. I still need to add some steel fences over here to uh, finish off all of the towers, but we have them all connected down here on one P2P tunnel. Basically, we have two outputs of the same color. You can see that probably up here because it's gonna say linked input side to outputs. So uh, that is each taking 16 channels over here and over here. And then I have a third P2P tunnel uh, that is hooked up to here and it's currently just using one channel. And we can set it up so, uh, bu, 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 if I can find my outside hole, uh, we can set up these if we wanted to. Uh, we can do this actually. Uh, let's say we have uh, some more smart cable like this. Uh, and we could have, for example, four different types of storages, for example, like this. Uh, whoops. So we could have um, a total of, that would be four to uh, four, eight, 16, 32 different storages if we wanted to, and they could be four tall or maybe even five tall. And we can add either the 64K storages and just have coprocessors, or we can just have a total of uh, four bigger storages so we can do four crafts at a time and if we want to add more uh, More crafting operations to be able to be made we can just put storages on the floor and the bottom and uh, hide them up uh, we could even just put some uh, Some storage uh, in the floor here and have one single machine over there and then one sticking out up top so I'm gonna decide how I wanna do that uh, in between episodes for the moment. We're just gonna have the 64K and a couple of coprocessors as our storage. And I'm gonna set up in between episodes a bunch of patterns for uh, all of these. But now that we have this done, we can toss in our pattern. Uh, and we have 32 molecular assemblers uh, down here. Uh, we might probably, for the amount of recipes that I wanna do, need we would need probably to double this. So what I can probably do is go in this early direction. I don't think I should cut into the bonsai area in the back, but we can just uh, double this in between episodes, add another line of these, and then add another line of assemblers, another line of these, and another line of assemblers. Uh, Cause I have plenty of interfaces. I used up the amount of assemblers that I had. I think it was two stacks total. So um, we need to do a bit more digging and a bit more sheet metaling and all the scaffolding and all that uh, in the next episode to uh, get this complete. But we have basic auto crafting and our pickaxe here is almost grandmaster. I think I just need to repair it one more time and let it go. So it's gonna level up in between episodes and we can make it unbreakable at the beginning of the next episode. Uh, so yeah, I think this is gonna be it for today. Uh, I am hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. You can also subscribe to see new videos. You can support me on Patreon if you want to play with me on this server. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a great one. Bye-bye.